Here's some scary dash cam video of that UPS plane crash in Louisville, Kentucky at the Muhammad Ali Airport. And so today we're going to try to figure out what could have brought this plane down and what could cause an engine to fall off of the left wing. And was that really the root cause of this crash? So today we're going to examine some of the evidence that we have here and try to come up with a consensus for this and figure out just what caused this. Probably the clearest video from a dash cam here of the entire crash. So we're going to step through it and it's going to come from right here behind these trees. There's the plane emerging right there. So you can see just how low it is. And as it comes into view here, it looks pretty intact. And even though it had just plowed through the roof of a large warehouse off the end of the runway, it looks like the landing gear is all still intact. Yeah, so right here, it is hitting the power line, and that's what that white flash is. But you can see all the landing gear is there. The right engine's on there, but there's no left engine. See, completely missing. It would be very obvious if the engine was still on there. Yeah, so that's our confirmation that the engine was indeed gone by this point in time. And so it seems to be blowing flames out the back of the wing. A little hard to tell from this angle. You could still see the smoke and everything from it. But gosh, can you imagine that? Never had a chance. And there's another flash from hitting another power line there. The plane in question was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F, which means freighter, and it was flying out of the Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport in Kentucky, where this was a major UPS hub for this plane. And here's another dash cam from a guy who was sitting in his truck there in the parking lot right when the plane came down directly in front of him and skidded across the parking lot. No doubt this guy freaked out, especially seeing that wall of flames and smoke. And then this is probably the most viral video that everybody's seen so far. The plane actually taking off from the runway with the engine missing and the flames there. And then it just crashes into the warehouse off the end of the runway. And just a few minutes ago, the NTSB gave us this photo here showing the recovered cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, the black boxes. So the NTSB knows that somehow this plane lost that number one engine on the left wing while it was still on the runway, going down the runway. After being cleared for takeoff, a large plume of fire in the area of the left wing occurred during the takeoff roll. The plane lifted off, gained enough altitude to clear the fence at the end of runway 17R. Shortly after clearing that fence, it made impact with structures and the terrain off of the airport property. And we have viewed airport CCTV security coverage, which shows the left engine detaching from the wing during the takeoff roll. And you're probably wondering, wait a minute, how can that happen? Why didn't they stop the plane? They were probably going faster than the V1 speed, which means you're committed. You have to lift up and you have to go off, even if you have a fire on the engine, because you're supposed to get up in the air and deal with it. Because if you don't deal with it, okay, and if you're still going down the runway, guess what's going to happen? You're going to overrun the runway, then your plane's going to smash into buildings and you're going to explode anyway. This is one of the biggest causes of the small aircraft crashes and the little private jets, because a lot of times they screw up and they, and they don't abort when they're supposed to, and they just keep going right off into the fields and everybody dies. Uh, I do want to also mention this just happened in the last basically 30 minutes. We have identified the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder. This is what is commonly referred to as a black box. Uh, we have investigators now that have located it, but we feel comfortable once we get these to our lab in DC that we will be able to get a good readout of the applicable data and that will be yet another point of information that will really help us understand what happened. Basically the engine that's been seen in some photographs. Uh, we do believe that that is the engine from the left side of the plane. Uh, it is actually on the airfield, so it's not off the airport property. That correlates with the video that we've seen of it detaching from the airplane while it is in flight. We also know that a fire was occurring during that time, and so we're analyzing that. In fact, we have teams right now that are preparing to do the runway in what we call a FOD walk. That is uh, foreign object debris. And two hours later, here is that FOD walk right here. Still uh, on the uh, tarmac there, 
surveying as the NTSB has 28 folks in town to conduct the investigation. And this was the helicopter view from last night. And you can see there, they've zoomed in on it. That looks like the engine cowling, but it's on the right side of the runway on the median, right next to the 2,000 foot left sign there. And then there's some views of the aerial towers from the fire department that are trying to put out the fire. But you can see how big that fireball is compared to the height of those aerial towers. So analyzing the scene, there's the view off the end of the runway, and you can see the plane just barely didn't even clear the top of this building, not even 30 feet off the ground. And that was most likely done by the landing gear. And so early on, when it was still daylight out, the news helicopter zoomed in over this part of the engine on the right-hand side of the runway. And so that looks like maybe, I don't know if you call it the cowling or the nacelle or what, but it's the front opening, and there's more parts along with it. And it's right near the 2,000-foot remaining sign. And so this means that the jet actually took off probably hundreds of feet before this, and that also the engine may have come off even further than that and just kept bouncing up the runway there. But you could see how close it was to the end of the runway. And then there's the building with the roof damage to it right there. So that's when they took off, and you can see probably the landing gear must have hit this part of the building, and then it went across, and that's where it crashed into the businesses. And then as you zoom out there, you can see the path that it took, and it crashed head-on right into that petroleum recycling plant. So when you look at a typical takeoff here from runway 17, and you're rotating right here, so nose is up, and look how fast you leave the runway. This is what we should have seen there, so that by the time you reach the end of the runway property right here, you're already up a few hundred feet there and you're way above the roofs of all of the warehouses down below. Okay, so here's the aerial view that they showed right after it first happened, and the first responders were just arriving. So you can see some of the aerial trucks were set up. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have the world's greatest resolution here. I think it was only like 720. I don't know why in this day and age people aren't uploading in 4K, folks. But anyway, there's your close up there you can see a couple of the fire engines and the aerial ladders were sticking out of the left side of the frame but you can see here it was just huge explosions and i believe one of them was in a petroleum place as you can see right there and i'll show you in a minute where one of the tanks was rolling actually after the crash and now as it zooms out look at the building on the left middle edge of the screen you can barely see the hole in the roof from where what i believe is the landing gear that came down and scraped that roof which helped cause the plane to flip and as it ran along that whole line of fire that you see there that's when it rotated 90 degrees vertical where you could see that the right wing was upward hmm so you know as soon as i saw this crash you know what immediately came to mind to me is American Airlines Flight 191. Now, some of you might be too young to remember that. I was in high school when this happened, and this took place in Chicago where a plane was taken off, and as soon as it took off, the engine fell off the wing, and it caused the plane to flip over and crash. Everybody was killed. That crash hit home for me because I used to visit my aunt and uncle in Naperville, Illinois, right outside Chicago. And so ever since that flight, I was afraid to fly for years, even though I would still go on the planes, but I would be very, very afraid. All because of that, same flight. So now what you're seeing on the screen there is what that plane looked like as it was coming down. That was the only known picture of that airline crash. And look closely, notice that it's missing the left engine. That was caused by improper maintenance procedures months earlier when a forklift caused some damage to the engine pylon and made a little crack that over time caused the engine to fall off during the takeoff. So if you're wondering how does an engine just fall off a wing like that? Well, there's one reason. Now, here's a few other reasons for you. Okay, so here's the particulars on this plane. So this is UPS Airlines Flight 2976. There's your tail number, N259UP. And it was a McDonnell Douglas MD-11F for a freighter. And it was, there's your manufacturer serial number. The engine was a GECF6 on there, and that's what NTSB is really going to be focusing on, is what was happening with this engine. And it was built as a passenger plane in 1991 and delivered to Thai Airways, and it was acquired by UPS in 2006, and they re-registered it there to the N259UP that it has now. 
And uh, the freighter conversion was completed in April 2007. So a lot of work has been done to this plane over the years. And the operator history is here. So Thai Airways operated it as a passenger plane from 91 to 2006. UPS has been operating it as a, a freight plane since 2006, all the way up until the crash. But there has been some recent heavy maintenance. So the aircraft was at ST Engineering in San Antonio for heavy maintenance from September 3rd to October 18th. So just basically for about a month and a half or so. And media reports note that work addressing corrosion and a fuel tank crack before the return to service. Hmm. So I wonder if they're going to be focusing on that or if that had anything to do with it or was it completely corrected and it had nothing to do with it. So those are some of the things the NTSB is going to be looking at. In fact, here is what they were looking at last night. So you can see the close-up down the runway, all of the vehicles there were. They were examining the runway, looking for all of the engine parts. And then you can see how the view shows how the plane moved off to its left and scraped the top of that building and gouged the roof. And then you can see the damage path going down towards the lower right of the screen. All right, so I made this slide here to show you some of the possible reasons. So. First would be the pylon or the mount structural failure, which would be back in here. Maintenance or reinstallation error. Material fatigue or corrosion. Or you have an uncontained engine failure, like let's say a fan blows up or something, fan blade separates and starts chewing out the inside of the engine and something really catastrophic happens there. Or you have an impact or a ground event, so from a previous flight. You have takeoff aerodynamic or torque loads. And then you have also maybe some design legacy factors. Maybe there was an issue with the engine design that's just now rearing its ugly head. So with the pylon or the mount structure, you could have cracks or material defects in the engine attachment points here. And then, of course, with the maintenance or reinstallation error, there's always improper procedures or just something that was overlooked or something got bumped. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that can happen during maintenance. That's like a, it's, a, it's a really dangerous point in time, I think. And then, of course, you have your material fatigue or corrosion. So if you have weakening of any of these pylon components or the brackets or the attachment bolts or something corrodes or cracks, you know, that could lead to a catastrophic failure. And then, of course, you have your uncontained engine failure. So as I mentioned before, like engine debris, some people suggest a bird strike, too. That could also cause something. But I don't think I've ever heard of a bird strike causing an engine to detach. And then, of course, you know, on previous flights, you know, you could have had some, you know, rough landings that might have caused some issues, too. And remember, where you know, takeoff is always like the probably your most dangerous time because that's when your stresses are the max. The engine is spinning up at its maximum, and that's when you weigh the most because you have whole you have two wings full of petroleum in there plus your center tank if you've got one. And then also, you know, some of this uh, your air your aerodynamic and torque loads at takeoff are really when it's going to be the the maximum at that point. So that's usually when you would expect something like this to happen. Now it looks like somebody shot this off of a CCTV screen at a nearby business. There's the plane at the top. And then take a look at some of these other security cam photos. Now watch the area right behind that red rescue truck. See how it looks like something skidded to a halt. Some early news reports were saying that was the engine, but that can't possibly be because we know the engine was left behind at the runway. That was probably just some other debris. I slowed it down here for you so you can see, watch the plane rotate with the wing, left wing down, no engine on it, but you can see the right engine there very clearly. Now here, somebody had the clearest video of the day, the highest resolution upload, but unfortunately it was the furthest one away because all it captured was just a little bit of that fireball that you see in the distance. But check out this incredibly detailed view from a truck's dash cam so you can see it coming skidding in right across the parking lot there and then here it is in slow motion now watch very carefully as you can see the landing gear there you can see the cockpit there's the right wing and the engine still attached even as though it's flipping over onto its top okay so what happens from here well you can bet the ntsb is going to be looking into every single maintenance record that they can get their hands on Going all the way back to day one, even notes from the build when the plane was being built 
in the factory. That's how far back they go. And so the NTSB will give us a preliminary report in about 30 days or so. And those will usually give us a little bit more information, but usually they end up opening up another can of worms of more questions than answers. And of course, the final report will usually be out in about 12 to 18 months. And speaking of NTSB final reports, make sure you check out this other video I did here a couple of weeks ago on the NTSB's final report on the Ocean Gate Titan submersible implosion. And if you didn't see my video on the Air India 171 crash over here, hey, why not, man? So go and check that video out too. And we'll see all of you on the next one.